These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Is Apple playing it too safe with the iPhone? It's a question that's been on the minds of many tech enthusiasts and critics over the last 10 years, maybe more, depending on who you ask. For a better part of the 2000s, Apple's been a dominant force in the industry with the iPod, the iPhone, iPad, and the computers, but some are wondering if their lack of innovation is putting them at risk. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. Thank you. Apple's history is full of game-changing products that revolutionized the tech industry. The iPhone, which once set the standard for smartphones, seems to have fallen into the same general design after the original. It ended up looking almost the same until finally in 2017, it was changed. From the outside looking in, one might think, yeah, these guys are coasting. For a similar example, let's take a look at the record industry. For over 50 years, we seem to get a new sound almost every decade. Each decade, hated by the decade that it followed. But the innovation was there. However, the way the industry actually ran was pretty much on autopilot. You write songs for an album, you record them, print it, sell it, in the 80s, they added making music videos. After that, you did what you did, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, until digital music came into the world. Gone was the need to go out and buy a record, a tape, a CD. You could download it, illegally and then legally. Eventually, you didn't even need to buy the whole album. By the way, I downloaded Metallica songs and was sued by them. It was actually listed in the filing along with about a million other people. When this started, most of the industry ignored it and just kept on doing their thing. Eventually, the money started drying up and they actually sat there scratching their heads. They chose to stop innovating and it destroyed the entire industry. There it is, right there. Now there's so much more to this, but I hope you get the idea. For over 10 years, the basic iPhone design was big bezels at the top and bottom with the home button. Now it was symmetrical, but year after year, it never seemed to get any kind of design advancement. Meanwhile, other companies like Samsung, HTC, LG, and many others were releasing all kinds of phones. The bezel started getting a little bit thinner and the phone's larger. Now Apple did go bigger with the iPhone 6 Plus and the bezels got bigger right along with it. Now I was one of those people during this time that made fun of the other companies because we would see upwards to 15 phones from one company released in a year. They went through phones like people went through socks. One of the few companies that I actually see making phones with smaller and smaller bezels was LG. Now, then and now, they're probably one of the leaders in screen technology, so it really isn't a surprise. Now, it looked really promising in 2014 when the LG G3 was released. The bezels were smaller, no buttons on the front or the sides, everything was on the back of the phone. Apple was just about to released their new design of the iPhone 6, which uh, people didn't like because that design on the back was ugly. Now I always took the stance that Apple's not gonna release something that was half-assed just because they could. Now the design works and I was okay with it because I was gonna put a case on it, but also the other improvements being made were super important as well. Yes, even my patients were wearing thin by the time the iPhone 7 hit. At least those horrible bands around the back of the phone were gone. I think that actually appeased me and many other people for our impatience in getting a new body design. Now, of course, the world is seeing what other companies are doing, and we're just sitting there going, man, is Apple just cruising? Of course, like I mentioned, Apple was making big improvements on the inside of the devices. The software experience, security, and of course, the camera was leading the industry. People didn't want those kind of updates every year. They wanted a bigger screen with no bezels. This would go on for another four years before Apple would actually go to that full screen design. 
I could see the general consensus. Was Apple playing it too safe, or were they just getting lazy? Things got even more heated at the beginning of 2017 when Samsung released the Galaxy S8 and the 8 Plus, LG with the G6, still no home button, and smaller bezels on the top and the bottom. Meanwhile, iPhone 7 users are standing there hearing rumors about a full screen display, but nothing yet. At this point, Apple was really put on the clock. The iPhone, which once set the standard for smartphones, had only seen incremental upgrades up until this point. The same could be said for their other products, iPad, MacBook, iMac, they all looked exactly the same from year to year. Things got thinner, sort of. Look at that edge, just remarkable how thin that design is. And you'll see it's actually not quite as thin as Apple made it out to be. There's this big bulge here in the back and from front to back, the monitor is actually about two and a half inches thick. But nothing Apple was doing would be considered groundbreaking. Now, on a side note to this critical part of Apple's recent phone history, I did read an article about the whole Apple deleting the iPhone 7 headphone jack. Critics said that Apple just wanted people to buy their wireless headbuds. They wanted to go ahead and make the phone more water resistant. It costs less, so they wanted to cut corners. Other companies said that they would never do that, but soon most of them did follow suit. Open mouth, insert foot. Am I right? But years later in this article, I learned that Apple was trying to free up space at the bottom of the phone because there was a change in display tech. Whether Apple did this or someone else did it for them, the innovation was coming that allowed the display to be folded under itself, therefore the connection would be underneath the display. Apple needed to make that room since space at the bottom of the phone was about to become real premium. This would allow for smaller bezels at the bottom of future phones. When the September 2017 Apple keynote began, we were first introduced to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Yay. More of the same thing. But something was different this time. Of course, their rumor mill leaking water like an overflowing dam. People were hoping there was one more phone. Well, Apple didn't disappoint with Tim Cook speaking these words. We do have one more thing. Apple was showing off the brand new iPhone 10. Look at that new design, full screen display. I really wish that was true. You all know what was coming next, the notch. Oh, the notch. People said, what are they doing? That thing is ugly. You may as well just have the forehead all the way across the top. I was just happy to get a new design. When I got the phone, I did and didn't care about the notch. Uh, that I thought it would bother me um, would be the would be the notch at the top. And actually, it, it's really not bothering me at all. But people could not let it go. Apple failed with design, some people said, and the memes came hard and fast. And don't even get me started on what happened to the iPhone 9. For me, the best part is when I heard all of the negative talk as if Apple was making a huge mistake, then we see other phone companies do the exact same thing. <laughs> Now Apple really wanted to do not only the front facing camera, but face ID, sensors, and scanners. There was no place to hide any of them. Instead of having the forehead design, many companies did the same thing. Apple just innovated the next big thing, the notch. Now companies like Samsung did not do this for their standard phones. They started with what I like to call the double hole punch and then the single hole punch following it up. Whether you liked it or not, it was definitely smaller than a notch. Now this is where Samsung did something that Apple didn't do. They decided to go with the fingerprint unlock under the display. Now they also had the ability to unlock with your face, but it wasn't the same as Apple. They just used camera face recognition to unlock. Things like face ID unlock for apps, or online payments isn't available because it doesn't have the 3D scanning and security like Apple does. Notch or hole punch. It really depends on what you want the phone to do and what you thought looked less ugly. So it may seem that Apple does have a method to their madness for some things. We are almost four years removed from the introduction of the notch foot. I mean the iPhone 10, and we still have a notch, sort of. Do I still feel the same way I did with the iPhone 10? Yes and no, and the reasons vary. Of course, you guys know I didn't keep the iPhone 14, so I can't really speak of the annoyances of noticing the island. For my iPhone 13 Pro, 
Some apps eliminate the notch with the bar so all the info is easy to see. Apps like YouTube Studio don't do that. And sometimes I need to look at my friends' thumbnails on their pages before a video is released and I can't see it. It's like blocked by the notch. It's. <sighs> I usually don't watch movies in full screen because one, it cuts the top and the bottom, and two, I don't like seeing the notch when I'm watching movies. I mean, instead of having the top totally being blocked, now it would have a smidgen across above the island. I don't know. If you've got an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, go ahead and leave your comments down below and let me know what your experience is like in those very apps doing the same thing. Now, in reality, most people don't care about these things and just want their phone to work. They don't need a radical update every year on a device they sparingly use throughout the day. It's us fanatics who are so close to the story, we think every move is a massive shift. When in reality, it's a calculated move by a group of people who are probably way smarter than most of us. Now don't get me wrong, there are people out there who also have a really good beat on what could be happening and can offer some awesome insight to how things work at a company like Apple. But let's be honest, those insights take not just years, but decades of experience. And there's plenty of people like me out there that share their opinions of Apple needs to be more innovative if they wanna keep their place on the top. They need to take some risks and try some new things. And that is a valid argument. However, we, as in myself included, don't really have any skin in the game. I mean, I, I kinda do because I'm building this channel on my experience, but you get the point. But is playing it safe for the iPhone such a bad thing? Apple's profits continue to soar, their customer satisfaction remains high. Maybe they don't need to reinvent the wheel if what they're doing is already working. So, is Apple playing it too safe? It's a question with a different answer depending on who you ask. Now, of course, what is certain is that technology is always changing, and companies like Apple need to be smart with their products to be able to survive. If you wanna see why I might be skipping the next iPhone, check out this video right here. If you really enjoyed this content today and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss my next video. See ya!